everyone. Thank you for joining me. Um, this is going to be the third video of the Make a Journal with Me. And the second video we left off, I had um, started working on the inside cover, had glued everything down, and then I needed to wait for it to dry. So now I've passed it through the sewing machine. And um, I'll just show you. We just, I, well, we, <laughs> I did a stitch. And then I take my seam ripper, let me find it. And when you go over um, like chenille bumps, um, it'll, it'll, you know, it'll do the stitch in there. But what's fantastic about them is you just, you can just rough them back up. And then it's, you know, it's like it never even happened. So you'll see here that I have this here on this side and I have this here on this side and I did a stitch. And when I went to do the, the stitch here, um, I missed it slightly. So I just put in another like little row of stitching, um, which, you know, it's just, it's, it just adds to that, you know, whole like shabby chic kind of, you know, feel. Um, so then you'll see that I've got that second row of stitching in here. So I think it's looking really, really cute. So I decided to go ahead and do the um, lines up and down here because I just thought it would look really, really neat. But I saved a row so that you could kind of just see my process and what I do. Um, so let me get this out of here. So obviously it's best if you do this sort of stuff when you haven't stitched things through. I tend to make things difficult and I tend to think of things after, you know, the fact. So um, in this case, it's not too bad because this this uh, fabric is really, really flexible. Um, not all fabric is like that. Um, so you wouldn't have as much room in here to work. So those are things to keep in mind, you know, if you're using a different fabric or if you are, um, you know, going to make an, you know, another journal and you want to think about, you know, you, you doing this, you know, type of stuff, you really should do your stitching, you know, prior. But anyway, um, what I do is um, I have a fairly like large needle because um, I needed a, an eye that could accommodate all six threads. Again, you don't have to use the six threads, but I like it because you can really actually see you know, you know, the, the strand, you know, the, together it's thicker. So you can really, really see, you know, the colors. And I just, I just, I like it. I like it with the six um, in total. So basically all I do is I just, I mean, I am doing this completely random. There is no rhyme or reason to it. I am just weaving in and out and I will do it several times before bringing my needle through. So I'll try to kind of be as clear as possible when I'm doing this. So I just start in and then I just continue to go and I just go in and out, in and out, in and out. And then I just pull it through. And sometimes I need a little bit of assistance because, you know, it's just the needle is slippery against, you know, the skin. And then I pull it through and, you know, the, um, the embroidery, you know, it kind of, you know, it tangles a little bit and stuff. So I just, you know, I'm just gentle when I kind of like pull it through. It kind of winds on itself. Um, so I'll get that fixed up before I continue on. Okay, so then all my strands are going in. I don't want to pull too tight. Um, and then sometimes I have to just like pick this up and let it kind of like drop down again. You know, it just, you know, it gets tangly. And then I'm going to just continue through. And really my only like focus is just to stay between, you know, the two rows of the chenille. Um, and just go here, but I kind of like, you know, I like that it's wavy. I like that aspect of, you know, the interest that that provides by just kind of being, you know, not perfect. But if you want to do perfect rows, by all means, that is your choice. You do that. <laughs> There's nothing perfect with my rows ever. Um... So it gets a little bit tangly. I think
think it just has a tendency to want to like wrap like that based on like when it's probably done in the factory. Um, I'm sure there's some sort of tip or trick to stop that, but we're just going with what we've got here. And I just continue, I just keep on going. But I really, I'm like so impressed with just like this subtle, um, subtle and simple thing <laughs> is just adding such like, it's fun, you know, it's fun. All the different, you know, colors changing and everything like that. So I probably go through like three times, four times, something like that. And then I pull that through. And these are just, um, I think they're like for jewelry making or wires or whatever. Um, but they have like the teeth in them. And I'm able to just like grip a little bit better, um, you know. So they're like spring loaded sort of. Um, but yeah, I just got them off of, they look, they um, get all gluey because my hands get glue on them. Um, but anyway, I mean, that doesn't matter. Doesn't hinder the process. All right, and then I'm just going to keep going. So I don't know if I'll completely like finish tying it. I think I might. Um, it just depends on after I get this last row done. Um, I'm a very visual person, so a lot of times I have to, like, see it um, before making, like, a dis you know, the ultimate decision. <laughs> so we'll just kind of see, but I'm leaning towards not wanting to have the blue in there, but I could totally change my mind, so we'll see. one pulled through pretty easily there okay so there we go and this thread has like a little bit of a black spot I don't know if that was from the factory or from me inking so I am just going to like rotate that around so that it's at the back because it just kind of or maybe I'll rotate it the other way it just kind of sticks out a little and I might be able to work it so that it's behind the fabric instead because I will pull this a little bit. I don't, you know, I don't want this really, really loose. And it kind of is to me at the moment, like really super loose. So like if you put anything in here, it's not going to stay. So I feel like I will have to like kind of tighten up the, you know, by just pulling on this. I'll, I can just kind of show you just by pulling on that. You see it's kind of like puckering and gathering. And I don't mind that. Um, and I'll probably just do that at the top row and then that'll kind of tighten this up. But if I feel like that's not enough, then I'll go and, you know, I'll pull through on the, the first and the second row if I need to. So I am just going to continue on here till I get to the very end and then just kind of see what that looks like. Almost there. Yeah, I'm really liking this a lot. 
So I actually, I think that's pretty cute. So I'm going from just a teensy bit of like the like deeper like sea green, you know, all the way to like more of like a springy green into like, you know, um, oh, what do they call that color? You know, it's like a yellow green really. And then it goes into like, you know, this beigey creamy and then to like a peachy and then the pink um, and then into the white. So I really, I don't know, I like it. I think it's really super cute. And see, by me just pulling that a little bit, it's kind of like taking care of that um, gathering. I still feel like I need to go one more, you know, time right there, you know, because I'm not quite to the edge. So I want to make sure I do that. And then I guess I, I don't know if I talked about this in the previous video of how I have it kind of like in between the pieces because this will eventually be um, glued down, you know, with the, the Fabri-Tac. Another thing I was going to tell you, I don't know if I had talked about it, is that um, like this stuffing part, you know, can totally come out of here. There's no like reason to have that in there um, at the edges. So, and it may fall out like over time anyway. So I just kind of like pull that out um, wherever I like, you know, see it. Um, another thing that helps is, I don't know if I talked about it before, but um, um, good thing I'll be gluing that because I've like tore that fabric a little bit. But another thing that I, um, I don't know if I talked about that I did it was that to kind of create some of the, um, you know, like the ruffling and to get some of that um, stuffing um, or it's, it's really called like quilt batting, um, is I took a, like, a, uh, this is sandpaper, you know, and I took it and then I went along like, you know, all the edges and stuff and really like roughed them up. So I've already kind of done it. Um, but I can't remember if I showed that to you in another video that I do it like that. So I just kind of like do that and then you'll see all these like different pieces come off and that's just a quick way to get it, you know, kind of messy. We like that. We like messy. So yeah, and you could use any sandpaper. It doesn't have to be this. I um, have previously taken that from my husband, but don't tell him. It came in like a, oh, what do you call that? Like a, you know, like a art kit type thing. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish there and I'm gonna come through in in between. So I hope you can see that. I'm coming, so I'm underneath the, the front fabric and I'm really underneath this, our base fabric, but I'm not through the cover. I'm in between the quilt piece and then this. So I'll come up through there. And that's kind of like where I'll hide my like my knots and such. Okay, so I really, I like that. Um, I am really, really pleased with that. It's subtle, um, but it creates like an interest. And um, I'm making sure I'm not pulling it too tight as I'm tugging, you know, because you can see how that end is coming up and I, I don't really want that. So I wanna make sure that that's good. So yeah, so I think I'll do that. Like, I'm happy with this the way that it is, but I'll leave myself a long enough tail to tie that off. And I have all this pretty stuff left over. Yeah, this is really, really cute. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you here how I'm gonna do that. So I basically, there's six strands, right? And I will separate three of them. Doesn't matter which, you know, which three, just the ones that separate the easiest. And then I just take it and then I want to tie it into a knot, but I don't want it to do so close, you know, so that's making sure that that is before I completely do a second one. So you got to do it twice to really actually make the knot because you tie it and then you tie it again to actually make it. And then I'll do another one here. Okay, and that is really good. And then you'll see like my little knot right there, which will be hidden. 
So I'm going to tie that and I may even just do it one more time just to be sure, but I am going to add a dollop of glue and then the whole thing is going to be glued anyway. So the shifting of it is probably pretty slim. Okay, so I'm going to add my glue first. So I just take um, glitter glue. It is, it dries clear. I think they have a white one too, I'm not sure. Um, but it's permanent. Um, and I always just do a little bit of glue on my knots. But I think I've, I think I've talked about that in the previous video. It's hard to remember what I've discussed. And I don't really worry too much about how much glue I put in this one because, you know, it's going to be completely like, uh, you know, you're not going to see it. And so I'm going to tie that a little bit, make sure that knot is good. And I just kind of like pull on that. And then I kind of let that dry and I leave these strands in here just in case, you know, it doesn't take. And I want to have, you know, something to grab onto again, you know, before I actually totally trim those off. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I don't have as much of a gap here, like um, for tying my knot. So I'm just checking to see if see what that looks like so I tie it I don't want to do it too much I want to make sure that this has got you know this is gonna stay straight so that looks good and actually for this one I'm gonna glue and then I'll tie it again in the knot and because it's white I kind of don't think even if the strands are showing I don't think it's gonna matter you'll just think that it's like strings you know hanging off so that's kind of that was convenient for me <laughs> otherwise my next thought is is if there wasn't enough of a spot down here to um, capture the knot then what I would have done was I would have done the knot I would have put this back through the needle and then I would have dragged the threads through to the other side of the pocket because then they would have been hidden because if this were if the blue was showing down here that would be like very noticeable and very odd but because they're white it kind of works in my favor but again I will wait to trim these until I am sure that that glue is dry just in case um, I will you know I need anything <laughs> I need it to do anything so I'll just leave those. So that is like, you know, the cover. The only other real real thing I have to think about, and a lot of times I do it last, and I don't know why I do it last. It should really be something that I think about because there are so many different ways to do a closure. Um, but I'm kind of leaning towards, you know, basically, if you, if you didn't think about it and you completely did your entire journal, you can just tie it with ribbon, twine, you know, sorry, uh, you know, seam binding, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, or you can create some cute little like closure or like a belt buckle or, you know, something like that and just, you know, do some sort of wrap style. There's all kinds of different options, but that's probably the only, and I don't know why I do wait until the very end, but I just feel like I have to see the journal <laughs> because there are, there are different things. Like you could actually, um, before we had put, we had sewn, and you know glued everything here we could have actually ran a ribbon in between the pieces you know to come out on each side to tie that's an option um, another option is, is to put an eyelet either here or here or both places and run your ribbon through there to tie it um, but I think I am just going to um, you know I'll t I, I don't think I'm going to use you know the eyelet option and I don't think I'm going to use um, where I like make a band but I don't know. We'll see. I definitely don't think I'm going to do the eyelet, but that that's always subject to change. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of like walk through like the papers. And again, 
I decided to do this whole like, you know, make a journal with me after I had already done all of the kits and everything and, you know, um, had them ready to go. So I pulled papers. So my papers may look a little bit different than your papers, but I am almost positive that you probably also have additional papers in your stash that you can utilize for this you know, journal. Um, there's no like true theme here unless you want there to be a theme of something. Um, so, you know, I'm going to show you the papers that I might pull for it. Now I'm pulling papers, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to make the cut, even though I go through all of the folding them and putting them where I wanted to be, want them to be. Sometimes they still get, you know, discarded and I don't mean like thrown away. They just, you know, get moved to a pile to be used, you know, in a future journal. Um, because I pull way more papers than will actually fit in this journal. Um, so I just kind of want to show you like my process and that's my process. I really do pull out a ton of papers more than what I need and then I work through them. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to decide like the dimensions of your um, paper. And so um, we did um, this Kaye size uh, journal and what's going to happen is that as you put more and more papers in when you're doing a single signature, well, anytime you're doing a signature, your papers will start to kind of, you know, um, move outward. And so they almost kind of technically need to be smaller as they go in. Um, so I try to make them so that it won't matter, like, in the end that they'll all, they'll still be like a really good size, but still there's some trimming that's going to, you know, take place because they're going to, you're going to start seeing them out here. Now, if you don't mind that look, then that won't matter. Um, but I tend to usually um, not have my papers extending beyond, you know, the cover. Um, but some people have a look for that and that's kind of cool too. So if that's the look you're going for, then go for that. Um, so... I am going to try to do, basically, I'm going to do, um, I'll probably cut, like, all my papers at, like, four and three quarters. You know, my cover goes to about, basically, five and a quarter. But, you know, the actual edge in here is going to create a little bit of bulk, which is going to push, you know, your papers out. And then, depending on how thick your papers are going to be, then you're going to lose a little bit. So we'll see, but I don't think, yeah, I just think four and three quarters is probably good. And then if I want to add any kind of trim to the edges, so that's what I'm going to go for. And then I think this is eight and a quarter. It might be a little taller because of the way that we did the cover. Yeah, it's like eight and a half inches. So I'll probably still stick with like eight and a half because most um, normal, you know, just like, printer paper that sort of thing pa paper can be eight and a half by 11 okay so let's pull some papers and I keep this handy because like I like to see what it looks like in in my journal sometimes I'll put this guy away don't really need the seam ripper so just kind of clearing some space off so that you know you can kind of see as much of what I you know what I'm doing okay so I've pulled a stack of all sorts of stuff, all kinds of book pages, um, book pages, recipe, you know, from recipe books, a letter. I really liked this letter because I liked the blue, the blue like matches the blue in here. And I just, I don't know when I put it here, I was like, that looks pretty cool. It actually kind of looks cute like that. And then, you know, maybe putting something else like decorative in front, but we'll get to that because I think like we'll probably like make you know, some like fun little things. Cause like that's even kind of cute there too. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I do, I go with through and I pull like all sorts of stuff that I think matches. And I start with my papers first before I start doing like all the ephemera bits and stuff like that. Um, but because this might go into, into be like an actual, you know, Pete part of the signature, then I will keep it here. But if, if I end up, you know, saying that I really would rather have it here you know, or in one of the pockets or something like that, then, um, you know, it'll get put to the side, you know, later. But anyway, so I've got like some recipe and I just, I just pull from all of my different books, um, everything. And, oh, I printed this out because I thought this would look really pretty is like the center. You know, I just thought that that was really pretty. It pulls in all the, the yellows and the pinks and the blues. 
and I can decide which way it goes. Hmm. Kind of like it like that. But I suppose it looks good either way. So that's my center sheet. And I hope I may have to end up trimming on that a little bit still. You know, because it's like it's like right at the edge. So what do I have this at? I have it at yeah, it's a little bit long, so I should probably trim it just a smidge more. I just don't want to lose too much of the image, but, you know, it's still pretty. Um, and then on the other side, I printed um, um, a French invoice on it. So it's super cute. But, yeah, I probably will need to trim it a little bit. I could even actually, like, kind of redo where it's at the center. I don't know. I don't really want to lose that. Hmm. Well, either way, I'm probably going to have to go smaller, but I'll just wait. I'll wait to the end. Um, okay, so I'm just going to kind of line up like my pages where I need them. Okay. So here is a Janet Marsh, which is a nice sturdy paper. So this is be really good for like pockets. And I just thought that these little birds were so cute right there. Um, and then this is uh, like one of the um, sheets in the front, you know, or even in the back, but this would have, this would have been in the front being that it said 10 cents um, in a book. Um, and these pages are really nice. They're really sturdy and they emboss really well. So I'm gonna put this over with my letter um, because I might emboss and do something else with it. And then this is just like some old, um, you know, notebook paper. It even has, I think like the little like perforation, but I'm gonna leave that there. Okay, and then here's an assortment of more book pages. So I'm gonna put those there. Um, here is some graph paper. Um, this might fall into ephemera because it's like a, you know, like a label thing. Okay, so we've got that and we've got this. Um, I don't really need a second graph paper. So, and then I've got like a lot of like tea stained paper. Um, I tea stained some like green copy paper and then this is cabbage dyed paper, which is really kind of cool too. Um, so I think um, all of these actually are really good pages and I think I you know I, I generally try to strive for like about it depends on how thick the pages are, but generally you know you can go anywhere from like 18 to 20. If you choose not to like do a lot of embellishing and pockets and things like that, then you can usually do a little bit more. So, um, but I, I, you know, I'll kind of show you like my process and how I gauge that. Um, so this is avocado dyed paper. And then I think this is rose dyed paper from Rose Petals and then tea dyed, tea dyed. Okay, so these are my solids. So I know that's my center. Um, and then it looks like I started like a little bit here. Oh, I did. So here's a cute like letter. And this is a scrapbook paper that I tea dyed. Oh yeah, okay. So I must've put this together when I worked a little bit um, the last time I did a video to kind of show you what I usually do. So I don't put a pocket on every page and I don't like um, certain pa pages together, but you can, you, whatever your method is, whatever looks good to you, you know, you can do it that way. Um, but this is, this would be like typically like kind of the, the, the way that I put things together. So there's like a page with interest. Then there is like a plain page, but it can have, you know, lines or a graph or something like that on it. Um, I even have like this dotted, dotted paper. And um, I always try to go for something that like will blend. So like this has blue lines on it for the graph. So then I've got this blue here for the, the uh, pocket. Um, and then I do like another book page. So I wouldn't put like music and music together. Um, I would just, you know, pick a different book page and I liked this because it had, you know, that's where it's torn out of the spine and I just like the the roughness that it looks, you know, good against the contrast of this tea dyed um, scrapbook paper. So like, I just think that those look really cool and I must have, you know, decided maybe, maybe this would be my center signature instead of, you know, printing out something because technically, you know, this doesn't have to be my center. Um, but it could be. 
Um, but see, like, I don't like this up against this. So then I, you know, have to think about, you know, where, what would I put there? Um, maybe this would be, you know, more in the beginning of the journal. And this would be, you know, if, if I choose to make this my center. But I don't have to. So I could do, you know, do I like that? Yeah, like I would like this, actually. That looks nice together. And then it goes to a ledger. And then maybe it goes to like, you know, like maybe I'll pull in one of these other colors. So maybe it goes like, um, or maybe I would do like a cream colored one first. You know, cause like that looks nice together. And then I could go to like another book page. You know, if that's the book page I like, or do, oh, you know what? I kind of want like a little bit of a larger one. What about this one? And this is uh, like, a, um, like a geometry book. Yeah, plain geometry. So I kind of like that there because that gives some, you know, interest. And then I could do, let's see, how many, how many have I done for my pockets? Um, so yeah, maybe I'd want to do like a pocket one next. So whether I went with like this, but I'm not too crazy about that. Or I did, let's see here. Um, I could really do any color. Um, like what if I did the... Would I like that? You know, or do I want it like that maybe, like a side pocket? So see, you can see here, this is from a previous, this would have been from a previous project that got discarded because, you know, I decided to take it out. Either the journal, you know, there wasn't enough room for it or I didn't like it at, at the end. Um, but maybe we'll use it, you know, here because it could be here. It could totally be here. I like that. But I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to trim this one down, but I'll figure that out in a second. So yeah, I don't mind that. That's nice. Okay. And then so we'll set that aside because I've used it. Um, because I always I try to have, you know, a variety as well in my journals, you know, so that not everything is the same. So then I could go to like Hmm. Where to use that? Do I like that up against it? I kind of do. The creamy. Let's see. And then maybe we would do um like another book page. Let's see. So I've got that. I have that. I've already got that. Um, maybe this. Well, but those are kind of the same size. I feel like I need to do a full sheet of something. So then maybe I need to like look at some of like my invoices. You know, either something like that. Hmm. Basically what I'm doing is I don't like, I don't like having like a short page and then another short page unless it's a lot shorter, you know, so like this would have been okay. Ooh, I kind of like that. <laughs> See how that happens? So that's kind of cool. Um, and this is really cool paper. This is, um, I feel like this is from um, a Sherlock Holmes one. I'm not positive, but um, it's got a real thin paper like this. So I like that. Okay, and then, and this is quite a long, you know, this is quite a long process, you know, doing this and for me deciding all this. Um, I don't just, you know, throw things together and then that's it. It's, you know, I look at it, I, I go through it. I could be like completely ready to buy in the journal and then I will take something out or add something in or replace, you know, something different. Okay, so I have this rose one, which is kind of already like folded. 
So that's kind of good. And then that could be a pocket, right? On the back side. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare that. Yeah, so I like that. Okay. So I'm going to move a few things out of the way to kind of show you. of what I you know go through to prepare the pages okay so we know we know that that is too wide So a lot of times I'll just go like this and I love my metal ruler. And then, you know, there's a lot of options. I mean, you can tear the page. You, I could have folded it differently so that I could have utilized, um, you know, this to make like a, a side tuck or something like that. Um, you could also like add paper, you know, to it. You could stitch it. Um, there's a lot of different things, which, you know, I'll probably do some other, you know, future videos on stuff like that. Um, but right now I'm just like, you know, selecting my papers for the journal and kind of like talking about, you know, preparing those and stuff and, and my thought process behind it. Um, but you could, you know, um, you know, you could, you could do it however you want to. You could actually, you know, take um, a couple of pages. I'll just kind of show you like... Um, on a little bit of a smaller scale <laughs> you know like say you want this on one side of your journal and you want this on the other side and you could just basically take them and tape them you know whether you do it with masking tape or washi or whatever and then this would become you know your signature and it doesn't matter because they would be you know it'll be like this you know so they'll be attached if, you know, so there, there's a lot of options for, you know, the different things that you can kind of do. And, and usually that comes later for me, um, if I choose to do that. Um, but I don't really worry too much about the scraps because I make paper. And so these will just go into, you know, the scrap bin to, um, be made into paper. So, uh, what I have left over in scraps doesn't really, you know, bother me much, um, because it'll be reused for something else. So I've got that, but then, oh, it's a little too tall. Um, so I'm kind of just guessing. <laughs> I am winging it here. Yeah, so I like that so far. All right, and then I know that the pink one is too long. Yeah, so I've got to take a little bit off of it. And I don't even actually mind if my papers kind of like if I'm going for that look of them sticking up a little bit. I, you know, I don't mind that either, really. So let me look and see what it's looking like in the journal. So here they are here. And I would say that they're sticking out just a teensy bit, you know, so I need to go like that is a little bit, you know, that's gonna happen, you know, and the more papers I put in, the more that that's gonna push out. It's just a natural thing that, you know, occurs. So I'll probably take it down just like maybe a little bit, you know, more, um, but that's, that's really like the process that I follow. I just continue to add papers and I, I do it so that there's, there's, you know, like when you, I open this up, that there's, you know, different, you know, patinas of color, there's, you know, different colors, you know, in general, and then that there's different sizes, you know, and then there's like texture and interest. Um, and, and more texture will be added later, but I, this is kind of how I go and I start, you know, layering my papers and I will flip through this like seriously dozens of times, um, before I am happy, before I am completely, you know, satisfied with the way that it looks. So when I go to do my next video, it's very possible that I could have these in a different spot. And then when I do the video after that, it is very, you know, the final, um, you know, journal could even be completely different because it's, it's not a process that stops. It's not, you know, you don't just get it all figured out and, and, and here you go. It's, it's, you know, at least my process is, um, I, 
I'm still auditioning things. I'm still looking at what looks good. When I open the page here, for instance, you know, do I like that? I kind of like that this is showing through and there's a little bit of blue in that and it's picking up the blue. That was a complete coincidence, um, but, I, but I do like that. Um, I'm not sure if I like the way that this overlaps, you know, this a little bit here. Um, I would have liked that to have been a little bit longer. So I may swap this out for like a different one that would, you know, come over. But I kind of like that the music pokes out there too so that you see all these different layers. So, you know, those are all just things that like I think about and I look at because I want I want this, you know, it's, it's, it's really like a piece of art. You know, you want it to look good all the way through from front to back. Um, you want all the pages, you know, to make sense and... You know, every time you're flipping the page, you want it to be interesting and to, and to look interesting and to, ooh, what's on the next page, you know, um, be enticing like that. Um, like, I think this looks really neat here. Um, so, yeah, so it, it's just a continual process. So whatever works for you, um, you know, this is, this is just something that takes some time, you know, as I go through all the pages and decide what I want to do. And then... Um, after I get all my papers together and I've got them all trimmed down and everything like that and I feel like, you know, it's not too, too thick because I have to, I basically want it to be thin kind of when I get all my papers in because I'm going to bulk it out. And then there are times where it starts doing the alligator thing and that's just, you know, how it goes. Um, but once it's bound in, you're kind of like stuck unless you want to tear out like an entire, you know, page from the front and the, and the back. But then that messes up everything. So it's better to like just kind of like work with what you have and just try to have it a little bit smaller. Um, let me see how many pages I have in here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then there's really actually two pages here. So I'm at like 13. Um, so I can still add quite a bit and I need to incorporate more pockets because technically I just have this pocket here and then a couple of like side ones. Um, so that's where like I'll figure out where I want like the little birds to go because these are cute. Um, and I think I don't want to fold those. So I think I'll have like a pocket up at the top instead. So and when I make those, I just kind of like measure it with, a you know, another paper and then I just go, you know, like that. I mean, that's another thing that you could do is just basically once you have a page done, you know, you can compare all your paper, you know, to that, um, to that one. Or, you know, you can just kind of like, you know, put it in here and then see if it, you know, if it fits and it works. Um, and normally I'll have like a, a bone folder, um, but I'll just use the edge of the scissors because, you know, they're right here. <laughs> Um, so then I'll, I'll have it like this and some, sometimes upside down doesn't bother people. Um, sometimes it bothers me. It just depends. Um, so this is, this is a time where I might, you know, put a little bit of fabric over here or, um, do a little bit of, um, you know, like taking some of this, you know, like ephemera and then, um, you know, putting it up there instead to just like create some interest. Cause like, how cool does that like already look, you know, that's brought in like a completely different, like, you know, a handwritten writing, you know, as opposed to the type. And then that's pretty cute. Um, and then, you know, like maybe doing some fabric. Fabric is actually really cool to do too. Um, oh, this also might be a time when I would use this, you know, like if I don't want this page to have any color, I would just take this and I would trim this off so that it's not gathered anymore you know and I, I would cut it you know at the end a little bit better but this is also something that would be cute here you know it could either go this way or it could go like this it could even poke out at the top a bit because like those are all really cute you could actually even still do something down here if you wanted to um, if you wanted to do like um, you know, a bit of like lace or something. Like I'm not really digging that, but you know, I mean, you kind of know what I mean. You know, or if you wanted to take like some like sari trim or something like that and do it. 
um, I kind of like it like this and where it's like um, kind of like down because like that's kind of cute and you could totally do something completely different on this side of the page than this one um, you know they'll be in different different um, spots in the book so um, you can you know do what you want um, I'm trying to think of like what else so like those are things I think about but I don't think about those till later um, I just want to get my pages in order of where I think they should go and you know they have yellow in them so I kind of uh, I want to see what it looks like when they're here see like with that yellow and then their their um, the wing is and a little bit of the head is kind of like a, this grayish blue so it kind of looks good too with like the blue you know that you can kind of like see in the corner so that's kind of cute too I could even bring in like another blue like a blue page um, like I have this or this This would look kind of cool too, even against the yellow because it's got that yellow in it. So, I wonder if I like it like that. You're not gonna see it if I fold it this way unless I extend it. So I kind of like it like this. So you know what, I'm just gonna fold it in half and then trim it later. So, but I'll kind of show you what my vision is. So I kind of like this here now. And this yellow in it from the cabbage dyeing um, is picking up the yellow here. So that looks nice. And then it looks really good with like the birds. So, I mean, even though I'll trim this down just a smidge, but not a whole lot, it won't need too much trimming. So yeah, so like that's kind of like how I go about, you know, selecting my pages and what, what's gonna go in here, you know, is um, just having, you know, as you flip through some interest already you know, some plain spots for journaling, um, some color, and then the interesting parts of like music and the different, you know, book pages. Um, you know, I like all that. And it looks, you know, interesting. So I'm going to continue doing that. And then um, in my next video, I'll kind of show you what I ended up with. And then we'll talk about the different ephemera pieces, you know, all the different things that I pull, um, you know, to add in to, you know, um, either add detail to the page or to, you know, create a pocket or a side, you know, tuck or, you know, whatever I end up doing or things that I'll actually put in the pockets. Um, just some of that stuff to like create even, even further interest within the journal. Um, so thanks for joining me. Um, I really appreciate, you know, all the great feedback that I've had of this um, journal series. And um, I look forward, you know, to um, finishing this journal and um, creating a bit more of it and really getting to see, you know, how it how it finishes. But already I'm just I'm just totally loving, you know, like where it's headed. Um, I just I think it's really, you know, looking really cute, you know, like if I've got that in there. And then like, like maybe this like journal card and, you know, it just starts to look how cute that's already starting to like, you know, look so interesting. And then maybe like a tag, you know, that I might alter or leave in there plain, you know, so the end user could do something with it. You know, I just, I like that. And then I just like, you know, playing with all the different things. And here's like a little playing card. You know, so it's just, it's going to be really cute, I think, you know, when it's finished. This could also actually make, like, a really cool, like, little, you know, tuck. Or, like, a little, you know, side, side tuck. Corner tuck, side tuck. A top one or a bottom one. But those are, that's, that's what I go through. You know, with every single page in the journal, I go through, you know, thinking about things and where things, you know, should be and what looks good. Um, you know, I'd probably put something back here that's like contrasting with the cream, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of like what I, what I think of, what I, yeah, what I work on. I kind of like that that pink is there to pick up the pink there. That might stay there. 
and then I need I definitely need something more interesting here but that'll come so um yeah you know um like even taking little bits of stuff you know from previous things um that's kind of cool there but I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> so basically that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna finish you know like thinking of my pages getting them kind of like lined up as how I think that they're going to be and then when I do the next video we'll talk about pulling all these little bits of you know like ephemera everything that I think might match and you know I'll start you know I'll start really like putting all those in there um and seeing how that all works together and any other changes that I might need to make um because I figure all that out before I actually do the binding um you want to figure out like all your different trim pieces and things like that so anyway, thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.